All right, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Welcome to Jesus is Lord Ministries. It's Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock, and my name's Pastor J.R. Wells. I'm here to bring forth the word to you today, and uh, I just want to thank you for tuning in. If you're tuning in today or tomorrow or on Facebook sometimes, I want to thank you for listening and just uh, hearing what I believe the Lord is saying to me, to, through me to you. And I want you to be blessed today. I want you to be beyond blessed. I want you to be able to stand up on your feet and look at your neighbor and look at yourself in the mirror and say, I am of God. God created me in His image. And in His image and in His likeness. My God is great. My God is good. You need to say that once in a while. We need to stand up and, and believe it. You say, well... Maybe I don't believe it, but you know I me, mean? you may not believe it, but do it by faith. Do it by faith. Stand up by faith and say, God, here I am. I am who I am because who you made me. Hallelujah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Hallelujah. Now, before we go, let's go to, we want to go to the Lord in prayer. And uh, <clears throat> as we do, I want to, to uh, read our um, decree that we read. You okay, Stephen? Read our decree and open up with the word of prayer. You know, God's good. And I'm, t I'm saying that not just because, you know, it's, it's something normal to say, but, you know, you, you look at life and you see life, you know, and we go through so much, you know, sometimes, and you say, is there a way out? Is there a way out? You know, I'm going to tell you, there is a way out of the heartaches, of the pain and the suffering that we're going through. It's through Jesus Christ. It's putting our faith in Him. It might not happen immediately. It might not happen right away. But we know for a fact that it's going to happen because God said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. That's a promise. Just look at somebody or look at yourself and just speak it to yourself. Say, God's given me a promise that He'll never leave me or forsake me. Hallelujah. 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 I want to thank Pastor Mike and, and Jesus is Lord Ministry, the staff, and, and all of them that's working the cameras and stuff. Thank you so much. Thank everybody that's here today. And if you're riding by here in, Gettys, in Gettysburg uh, on your way through or to, from Gettysburg or to Gettysburg, and you want to stop in and just enjoy a service, come on. We're here at 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock, and 6 o'clock, seven days a week. 300, well, I can't say 365 days, but seven days a week at least. So praise God. And as we get ready, prepare your hearts to say this with me. Okay, you ready? I want you to just take a deep breath. Breathe in, let it out, and now let the Holy Spirit come upon you. And repeat after me. The Lord is with me today. I am blessed coming in and going out. I am the head and not the tail. I am above only and not beneath. I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. If God be for me, who can be against me. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against me, I shall condemn with the word of God. The blood of Jesus covers me, and by his stripes I am healed. I find favor and good understanding with God and with man. My God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. Uh, I just want to let you know that we've been doing what we call the red letter and it's uh, how Jesus was speaking to each and every one of us and speaking to the disciples as uh, he was preaching. And that's what we've been going over. Now, I've been, you know, 
some of the scriptures I'm intertwining, mixing up, bringing them together and, and everything just so we can get a better grips of it. So uh, if you say, well, that really wasn't all that, and I say, well, you know, I'm trying to bring it together so that we can have an understanding. Because, see, the Word of God says that if we ask God for understanding, that He'll give it to us. That He will give us the understanding that we need. And that's, and that's what I pray today, that each and every, me and you and the, everyone that's here and, and the sound of my voice will get an understanding of God's Word. And He will create in us the joy of His salvation. He will create in us that clean heart that He, clean, that, that he has given to us. See, we each have a clean heart, but sometimes we fail and mess up. Have you ever messed up? I mess up all the time. That's the reason I'm so glad David wrote Psalm 51. Because when he wrote it, I said, oh, glory be to God. First time I read that, I, I tell you, I got so happy because... You know, there's every, we, sometimes we just can't help ourselves. We just mess up. And then there you go. We got that word that says, God, forgive me, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew that right spirit within me. Take not your Holy Spirit from me and restore. I love this word. And restore. Listen. And restore and restore the joy. Hallelujah. The joy of your salvation in me. Think about that. There's joy in God's salvation. You say, well, I don't, uh, yeah, there's joy in God's salvation. Whether you like it or not, there's joy. And that's what it's all about, the joy of God. Now, listen, I, I'm a, we're going to go a little place here. And as we do, uh, I just got to pick up where we left off last week. And uh, do you remember last week I read in Second Chronicles 16, 9, it says, for the Lord, for the eyes of the Lord runs to and fro throughout the whole earth to show him himself strong and mighty on the behalf of those who hope in him. Now, I paraphrase that a little bit, but, but you understand. You get the grips. God's eyes, he's running to and he's looking for us. I said that last week. God is taking his time. Just to, I mean, come on now, just to look for us. Who's us? Me, you. God doesn't want anyone to go to hell. He wants each and every one of us to be, have that joy of that salvation, knowing, and that joy of the salvation is, is, is simply, if, if you're wondering what it is, is simply knowing that you're going to heaven and not hell. Simply knowing the joy of salvation that your name is written in the book of life. Glory be to, think about that. My name is written in the Lamb's book of life. God knows my name. He knows your name. God says he has a plan for us, plan to prosper us, plan to, to, to give us greatness and goodness and, and, and the, everything that there is. But you know what? He says that plan is for good, not evil. He says, and I'm planning to protect you from evil. See, we, some, we have to get in our hearts, in our minds, that God is with us. And if God is with me, who can be against me? Think about that, my, my friend. If God is for me, if God is searching through the heavens, on the earth, seeking whom he will find, to share a blessing on us, to share it. That's God. You, you, that's joyful. That's the joy of his salvation. Okay, uh, let's just go here. I want to go here. It says, uh, no man, now back to John 6, 41. It says, no man could come to me except the Father which sent me drew him. And I will, uh, that drew him. Yeah, see, no one can come to the Father except through Jesus. Remember we read about uh, earlier that, you know, last week about how we haven't chosen God. God has chosen us. And then back in the New Testament, we've seen back in Genesis 1, 26 and uh, on down a little bit, 28, 29, 27, where, where God created man in his image. See, God's chosen us. I want you to just, just think about that. You are so special in God's sight that he's chosen you. 
Think about that. You didn't choose God. You say, well, yes, I did. Well, yes, you did, but you didn't. God had already had it planned for you. It, it go on now. It says, uh, no man can come to the Father except no man, excuse me, no man can come to me, this is Jesus talking, to Jesus except the Father which sent me, him, Jesus, to draw him. And I will raise him up at the last day. Friends, enemies, children of God, we are in the last days. I hate to tell you this. Time is running out on this earth. I know you're going to say, well, I've been hearing that for a long time. Well, I've been hearing it also for over 43 years. Well, yeah, almost 43 years, probably 42 years now. But I've heard it before I got saved. But now I know for a fact that time is drawing. I mean, all you got to do is read the Bible. You know, people saying that I got to read this book to find out where the world is today. I got to read that book. I got to do. No, you don't. Read the Bible. And I, I encourage you to read it. But I also encourage you, as you're reading the Gospels, go to the back of the book and read Revelation at the same time. And you're going to find, you're going to find the goodness of God. How God is, is so concerned about you. How He loves you and wants you. How He cares about you. How He, would, how he gave up Jesus, who went to the cross and died for us, so that we... Mm, 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 look at your neighbor and say, that, that we is me. <laughs> Hallelujah. So that we can have a place in heaven. Now I want to uh, jump a little bit here to back, uh, go forward a little bit on this message. And I want to go to Matthew 6, 33. You all probably know this scripture by heart. But I, I, but I want to go there and it says these words. It says, seek first. Now what is first? What is first? First is first. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and His righteousness are His right standing. See, God wants us to be in right standing with Him. And all your needs He will provide. Or it says, and all your needs will be provided. Think about that now. All your needs will be provided as we seek first the kingdom of God. And when we seek first the kingdom of God, what is that talking about? What is that talking about? It's talking about going to God and, and serving Him. It's talking about being a server of God, being a servant of God. Listen, listen, 2 Chronicles, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians 2, 14 and 17. It says, but thanks be to God. Who? Thanks be to God. Who? Thanks be to God. Not to man, not to me, not to your brother, your sister, your mama, your daddy, your aunt, your uncle. Nobody. It's thanks be to God who always, but seek first the kingdom of God and all your needs will be provided. Who always leads us in triumphal processions in Christ, procession in Christ, and through us spreads everywhere the fragrance of the knowledge of Him. You got a smell on you, my friend. You have a smell on you. You have a fragrance of God on you when you seek God, when you go after God, when you, when you want to serve God. When, when you're seeking God to serve Him, it goes on to say, well, I want to back up for a minute. And through us, through us, that's me, I'm an us. Through us spreads everywhere the fragrance of the knowledge of God. Think about that. The sense, the smell that you have on you is something that is of God. You say, you know, you, sometimes we go around people and they, and they just don't, have that odor that, that, that just don't smell all that good. But, you know, we, we deal with it. We, we, we live with it. We, we say, well, God, God's going to take care of this. But see, we as a Christian has an odor. That's the reason when we, when we get around sinners, I say when we get around sinners, they want to back off because, see, what they do, they don't have any sense that you belong to God. 
They don't only know that you have the living Christ in you. They don't even only know that God is who God says He is in you, and you, you belong to Him, and you're seeking first God. See, God, they don't only know that, but they smell something on you, and it's the fragrance of God. Hallelujah. And that fragrance of God. I don't know about you, but sometimes we need, <clears throat> we, we need to take and, and share our fragrance to this world and to those around us to get the stink away. And when I say stink, I mean the sins of the world that's around you. See, sometimes we need to look up and say, God, I need more of your fragrance. God, I need more. I want to smell like you everywhere I go. I want to spread it. I want, like, like uh, and I'm going to say this, this may not be too nice, but most of you understand if you're a farmer, you understand, or if you're a city person and you're driving by a farm, you definitely understand because you're not used to it. But when the farmer is spreading their manure or their pig manure and stuff, it stinks. It has an odor. It has a fragrant with us that sometimes make us gag or make us. But you know what? And I'm giving you this as an example. The God that we serve that says seek first, he's the one that will put a fragrance on you that people can smell the goodness of God on you. The goodness of God on you. Think about it. Just look at your neighbor and go ahead. Go look at your neighbor and say, the goodness of God is on me. Go ahead. You look at your neighbor. Say it. The goodness of God is on me. You know why? Because he has planted in you. Now, remember, we talked about the fruit of the Spirit. We talked about, no, we didn't talk about the fruits of the Spirit. We talked about Jesus is the vine and we are the branches and Father God is the, is the gardener. That's what I'm talking about. See, he, he's engrafted this, this, this branch into the vine and that's what makes us grow. And, and that vine, once we get engrafted into that vine, now listen, I, I might think it might be buzzing off here but I'm not I'm going to tie it together in a minute once we get engrafted into that vine what happens is our branch that's us we begin to blossom and it might take a day or two a month a year but but when you get a hold of Jesus and you accept him as your Lord and Savior and you say God I have nothing but you when you say God I want to seek you first and then what happens is you begin to grow that branch that's engrafted into the vine of Jesus Christ, that is engrafted into Jesus Christ. God the Father takes and he begins to implant in you his word. He begins to implant in you his knowledge. He begins to implant in you his wisdom. You know, the book of James says, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. And he'll give it to him liberty and not hold back. Think about that. See, we run around, I really need wisdom, Lord. I don't know what your plan is, Lord. I really, I, I, I don't know, Lord. What, what am I going to do? God, you said if I ask you for wisdom, you'll give it to me. You know how many times a day I have to do that? I mean, I'm me personally. I'm, and, and I'm not saying that to be proud for anything, but I have to ask for God's wisdom on everything. When I'm driving down the road, God, give me your wisdom that I don't have a wreck. God, give me your wisdom to, to, so I don't get a speeding ticket. God, God, give me your wisdom. Give me your wisdom. And, and, and when we ask God for wisdom, I'm telling you, there's something that busts open in us. We see things that, that, that you can't even, I mean, I, let me say me. I, I don't know about you. But me, I see things that I'm finding that, God, I never even thought this was possible. How? You know, and, and, and things happen. So ask God for his wisdom. Seek first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. Seek first the kingdom of God, and he will provide these things to you. What things? The thing, see, it's not only talking about, see, once we, all, we, we always want to think about this, and, and you're going to have to forgive me here because I'm going to have to jump someplace. When we talk about God's provision and giving, and God's giving the tithes to God and, and opening up our hearts to God and giving. The first thing that comes to our heart is we're talking about money. I'm sorry, my friends. God is more than just money. God is a provision for every need that you have. How do you, you might need something 
spiritually, and God's going to see it. But you never understand it and realize that God's given you something because your mind is set. Well, he's talking about giving, so there you go. i got to leave. I don't want to give no money. No, it's not about money. God's not a... God's God. He owns a cattle on a thousand hills. And if God needs to sell one, he will. He don't need your money, but we give. But we're a giver because God says to be a giver. Not, and then we to give of ourselves. We are to serve him. How do we serve him? By giving. We, by giving of ourselves, by doing something, by going out and, and working for God. Now, I don't mean working your salvation. I mean being a witness to God, being a um, whatever it is to God, helping somebody, finding somebody that's lost, that needs a Savior, finding somebody that needs the truth spoken to them. And, and, and I'll tell you, that's the hardest right there, trying to speak the truth to somebody. But, and, but you need God's boldness to do that. I, and... Because I know I'm in a predicament right now that i got to speak the truth to people. And sometimes, you know, these people that I'm looking at, you know, I love them and I see them and I see the hurt on them. But if I don't speak the truth to them, my friend, if you don't speak the truth to them, they're on their way to hell. God doesn't desire anyone to go to hell. But only we can stop from going to hell. There's people saying, you know, why does God send people to hell? He doesn't. You allow yourself to go to hell if you don't accept Jesus Christ. God has a standard, and that standard says to love one another. Jesus says to the, when, when the Pharisees came up to him and the Sadducees and, and all of them that came up to him, the scribes, they came up to him and they said, what is the greatest commandment? And Jesus looked at them, you know, Jesus is a pretty smart fellow. So if you think about on the lines of what Jesus is saying, and you speak like Jesus, he's pretty smart. And, and I like speaking like Jesus, because if I speak like Jesus, that means i got a little bit of wisdom coming out of me. I don't have all the wisdom that Jesus has, but I'm working on it. But the, when they came up to him, they said, all right, you're such a great rabbi or a great whatever. What is the first commandment? And Jesus simply stopped what he was doing and looked at him. And I, I could imagine, you know, me, I know what I would have said. I said, look, fools, you know what it is. But I'm going to tell you anyway. It's to love the Lord your God. Now listen to what Jesus says. To love the Lord your God with. Listen. To love the Lord your God with. Listen. With all of your heart. Your spiritual person is to love the Lord your God with all that you have, all of your heart, all that you, of your being, all of your finances, all of your, uh, of your uh, housing, all of your, of your everything it is. Love the Lord your God with all. All, we're to love him with all. But see, he says, but first seek the kingdom of God. That's how we learn to love God. We seek him. We look after him. We're running after him, seeking him. You know, we used to be a little game we used to play. I don't even know if the kids still do it or not, called hide and seek. You know, you, you, a couple go running, and, and then you had to be the seeker. So being a seeker, guess where we're going? Being a seeker, we had to go after and find them. And see, that's what God's saying. We are the seekers of him. We are the seekers of that goes after and finds God. He's not far away. Matter of fact, he's right there. He, you know, he's not hiding behind a bush. He's not hiding under a chair. He's not under the kitchen table. But he is right in front of us. But some of us, some of us, I, I, I'm going to say this, okay, and I'm saying this for me, but I'm saying this for you also. Some of us doesn't seek him enough to find him even though he's right in front of us he's reaching down to pull you up out of the gutter he's reaching down to pull you up to save you to bring you into a place of gratitude for him he's reaching down but see we got to seek him we got to seek him see just like when you're playing hide and seek or maybe when you were the children you went or when you were a child sorry when you were a child, you went out and you played hide and seek. 
And there's some people that hit so good you couldn't find them. I mean, they hit good. But see, God's not like that. He hides in the open. Glory be to God. Did I just say that? Wow, thank you, Jesus. When you're seeking God, He hides in the open so that you can find Him and find Him fast. See, we, we seek God because we're ordered to seek God. We're commanded to seek God. Why? Not because He's threatened us to take this or take that from us. If I don't seek Him, I ain't going to get this. If I don't seek Him, I, this is going to happen. None of that doesn't happen. But when we seek first God, we find Him. And that's what I'm talking about this morning. We need to find Him in the open so that we can share Him in the open. See, God's not hiding. And then when you go into that room and, you, and, 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 and you, you're around people, and, and, you, and you know they smell the fragrance of God on you, and they start backing up, what that is, what's that saying is God saying to you, they need to seek me, so get a little closer. Let them smell, let them smell the, the fragrance of God. Let them smell the lily of the valley the bright morning star. Let them smell him. Let them smell how good he is. Mm, mm, mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The birds of the air are coming to find him. We need to seek him. We need to seek him so that we can walk in his fragrance, so that we can serve him in his fragrance. Listen, I, I'm going to go here. I, I wasn't, but I don't know. I, I think God said, before I go, I just want to read Ephesians uh, 3. Verse 20, it says, now listen, for all of you naysayers out there, that's ones that has doubt, okay? For all of you naysayers, for all of you that says, I'm not sure, for all of you that says, I ain't got that far yet, for all of you that's there, I want to read something to you. I want to read something to you. For all of you that says, God's not really going to be able to help me, God's not really that, you know, I, I'm just going too, through too much. Even though God created me and he's chosen me, I don't have the faith in me yet to believe that God's going to help me. Well, he's going to help you, and I'm going to share a scripture with you right now that, that helped me a long, long time ago. I mean, it was a scripture that I lived by. That I, that I, every time I heard it, I got excited. I jumped up and down, not literally, but in my spirit. And then sometimes if I was by myself, I jumped up and down. But, you know, this scripture that I'm about ready to read to you is a scripture that will bring you out of your fear. It will bring you out of wherever you're at. Yeah, you know God. You, you know God. You know God is great. You know God loves you, and you love God but there's something missing in your life and you don't know what it is and you're trying to figure it out and you're try trying to figure out how to get there. Listen, listen to what Ephesians 3 says. You ready? Ephesians 3.20. It says, God, just look at your neighbor and say God. God is able. That right there, my friends, is enough to, to throw up your hands and praise him. Lord God, thank you that you're able. Thank you, Lord God, that you're able. You're able, Lord God, to get me through it. You're able to get me through the hard times. You're able to get me through the, the short times. You're able to get me through the good times. You're able to get me through that moment that I want to be proud of myself. Because, but i got to back off and say, wait a minute, it's because of God, not me. You're able. God is able. God is able. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it again. God is able. Say that with me. God is able. Hallelujah. Now listen. Let's go on and read it. And you'll see why I get so excited when I read it. God is able to do exceedingly, more than exceedingly. Whatever you think God can't do, He can do it more than. Abundantly, more than. God can do it exceedingly, abundantly. This is the God I'm talking about. This is my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that died on the cross for us, that's sitting at the right hand of God the Father, that says to God the Father, Father, He's got my blood on Him. He belongs. Do, do, you're able to do exceedingly. You're able to do exceedingly for, my, for Him. He's mine. He's my brother. 
He's mine. He loves you, God. He's mine. That's what Jesus is saying to God when you say, God, are you able? God is able. God is able. And I'm not even preaching a message about able. But God is able. Listen to me. The provision that you need. Seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first. What is first? First is the beginning. You know, I hear about people getting up first thing they do when they get up out of bed. They throw their hands up and start praising God and, and thanking God and everything else. And that's all good. But I'm telling you now, I'm, can I be honest with you? I don't do that. Not that I don't want to. It's just when I get up out of bed, I have certain things I have to do. And God knows that. But then I seek God. See, I seek first. I, I, I may not get up and praise him. And there, What I do is say, thank you, God, for another day. That's praising him. Thank you, God, that you're going to do exceedingly, abundantly. Ab Boy, I ain't got there yet. Listen, where did my glasses go? Oh, there they are. Exceedingly, abundantly, above. Now, this is, this, this is what gets me jumping and shouting and praising God. Above all. Say all. How much is all? All is all, and that's all there is to it. Above all, above all, say it again, above all, above all, that we ask, that we ask, that we ask, Jesus says, when you speak to the Father, you ask Him in my name. You ask Him in my name. You ask Him in my name, and He will give it to you. See, sometimes we're asking God, the wrong motive. We're asking God for things that, that really we shouldn't because we know it, it will harm us. God knows it will harm us. God won't give you something to harm you. He, he, he'll keep it back from you. He'll, he'll be with you. He'll walk with you. He'll talk with you. But he said that I give you exceedingly, abundantly, above all, that, you, that we ask, that we ask of him. He'll give it to us exceedingly, abundantly exceedingly abundantly think come on come on church god is going to do it he's going to do it for us god is able for us to do it god is able just look at somebody even if you're not home by yourself and you're sitting there just look at in a mirror or, or just say it out loud my god is able hallelujah my god is able to do what I ask. Now, but listen, it goes beyond that. It goes beyond that. And think. So in other words, when you're not speaking, asking God for things, but you're thinking about things you need from God, God is able. See, God knows your thoughts. Some of you might say, well, he don't know my thoughts. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. He knows your thoughts. That's the reason we have to have a clear mind. That's the reason our mind has to be clean. That's the reason we have to, when we get these thoughts that the enemy put, put well, when the enemy puts in our, in our thinking, and he thinks, puts things in there that shouldn't be in there, that's the reason we have to go to God and say, God, forgive me. My thoughts were wrong. That, but, but you know what? When we think good things, God, I'm thanking you for this. I'm thanking you for my healing. I'm thanking you for my wife's healing. Lord God, I'm thanking you for the prosperity that you have for me. Lord, I'm thanking you that I can help somebody that is in need. Lord, I thank you for that. Now, when we think it in our minds, and all of a sudden, we may not have said it out loud, but when we think it in our minds, you know, especially the one, God, help, let me help somebody that's in need, all of a sudden you're thinking and you're walking around and, and God's going to say to you, hey, do you remember you were thinking about helping somebody? Now, this, this is just me and God. I don't know how you talk with God. But this is me, and I say, yeah. He says, that person over there needs some help. I say, okay. If I got it, they're getting it. If I got it, they're getting it. Why? Not because I'm, I'm anything. It's because I believe God wants us to help those that are in need. And there's a scripture that, that in Proverbs it says that when we give to the poor, when we give to the poor, now listen to this, and I can show, and I know how this works, because I know how this works. This is a personal thing to me. It says, when we give to the Lord, 
your, I mean, when we give to the poor, you're lending. Listen, you're lending to God. Okay, now can I share something with you real quick? I don't know if I did this before or not, but I want to share something. My daughter, she had a good job, working good, worked there for 10 years. Everything was good. And then this one person came in on the other side, and, she, and that person started call, causing different kinds of uh, problems. My daughter hung in there and kept working and working. They talked bad about my daughter and everything else, knowing it was a lie. But she just kept going. And then one day they called her and they said, we're sorry, we're going to have to let you go. And uh, she says, why? Well, they couldn't give her a good reason. So they let her go. And then they said, we're not going to pay you your severance pay, which she was entitled to. We're not going to pay you your vacation time, which she worked for. We're not going to do all that. Okay, we're not going to do that. So my daughter, being the intelligent one of the family, besides my wife, she called up the higher person in, at the place, and she started talking to them. And that person listened to her. See, that person listened to her. And when she listened to her, Christy said to me, my daughter, she says, I don't, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. So my wife and I, we read that scripture. We, we live by that scripture. If you give to the poor, you're lending to the, to the Lord. And I said to God one day in church, while they were preaching, yeah, I li- paid attention to God instead of the preacher. While everybody was preaching, I looked up and I, I seen that scripture again. And I said, God, you said that if we give to the poor. Now, Lord... My wife and I, we've given to the poor all of our lives, but, Lord, we also have this ministry that we give to the poor. So, Lord, I'm not asking you for something for me. I know you've given me all I have, and I appreciate it. But, Lord, I need you to do, if you would, please, show my daughter favor in this situation with this work problem. I said, would you do that, Lord, just because we're givers to the poor? I mean, we lend it to you. I'm asking you for, and I, I really said this. You might say, well, that's wrong. I'm asking you for a repayment, Lord. I'm asking you if you could pay me back on this. But not for me, but for my daughter. Within, I think it was uh, two weeks, a week, something like that, they called my daughter up, and here's what they said. These are the words. I'll show you how good God is. These are the words they said to my daughter. They said, We are going to pay you your back pay. We're going to pay you your severance pay. We're going to pay you your vacation pay. If, now listen to these words. This is how good my God is. If you promise not to sue us. They looked into the situation. God got into into this mess that, that they had on my daughter. And he intervened and he showed them if you don't do right, she can get more than you're offering. Do you hear me? God intervened for my daughter because I asked him to, because we gave and give to the poor. We give to those that are in need, and we lend into the Lord. Now, I don't all the time ask God to repay me for something, but that was something I didn't know what else to do. My daughter was hurting her family and everything else. She needed an answer. And the only thing I knew what to do was go to God, and I did. And I said, God, I'm a giver. We're, we give and we give, and I need, I've need. i landed to you, as your word says, and I need you to come through. Will you help my daughter? And guess what? They came back and said, we're going to pay you everything back if, and I love this part here, promise not to sue us. See, they knew that they unlawfully fired her. They knew that they unlawfully Let her go. They did something that they shouldn't have done. And God knew it. But God was waiting for me to ask him for a repayment. See, God God wants to bless you. He wants to bless your family. See, you say, well, is that true? Yes, true. That's what I said to God. I said, God, I give so, we've given 30 years to to this food ministry. We've done everything. But I need your help now with my family, my daughter. And he came through. And God came through. So don't ever think that your giving doesn't provoke God to see your needs being met. Matter of fact, I tell you what, I'm going to say this, I'm going to say it out loud. 
when you give to the poor, I'm not talking about money. If you told, if you got to give money, do it. But I'm talking about maybe you give them food. Maybe you give them time just to sit and listen. See, poor means just a lot of things. But see, maybe you just sit down and talk to them or let them talk to you and kept your mouth shut. Have you ever done that? Let, find somebody that just needs to talk and you just sit there and, and let them talk and in your mind and thinking, thank you, God, that, that they're going to come through instead of interrupting them. See, that's the best thing we can do sometimes. But God, he, is, he wants you to provoke him. And I'm saying this out of the Spirit of God. He wants you to provoke him and your giving so that he can show you that so that he can show you that he will show up and give back what is needed to you abundantly exceedingly greatly more than however way you want to say it more than you can even think or talk about more than that's the god we serve are you with me seek first the kingdom of god and that's what we've done in all our lives. We seek first the kingdom of God. I may not have done it 24-7. I may not do it 24-7. I may do, do other things. But you know what? God knows my heart. God knows when I seek after him, I shall find him and find favor with him. Find favor with him. Let me finish reading this. I, I'm going to read it all over again, right from the beginning, okay? I'm not going to stop until I get to the end. It says, And God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, the King James says, more than, and above all that we can ask or think. Now, here it comes. According to the power of, According, now this, this is something we're going to have to get a hold of, my friend. According to the power that works, that works in us. Well, what do you mean by that? We, there's a power that works in us that if we take a hold of God and we get a hold of faith. I was, you know, there's times that when we're, when, we, when we're believing God for something and we're sitting there on the, on the bench and we're believing God and we're just sitting there, sitting there, oh God, please, 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 please. We're begging God. We're, we're, we're seeking after Him. We're trying to find out why He ain't working. There's times, my friend, that we need to stand up do what Mark says, Mark eleven twenty four, and have the faith of God and begin to move in that faith. Speak to that mountain and watch it go. Speak to the valley and watch it rise up. Speak to the problem and watch it go. But first of all, we have to seek first the kingdom of God. First of all, we got to take that step of faith and say, God, here it is. I'm doing it. I'm doing it, God. I'm doing it. Now I need it back. I need it exceedingly abundantly. God, I'm in this predicament. My car just broke down. I need help. God, God, my house payment's due. I need help. God, God, I ain't got no groceries on the table. I need help. God, God, my, my, my family's sick. I need help. God, God, my mind, I'm losing my mind. My pride's got a hold of me. God, God, see, but you, you call out to God and you say, God, you're more than... You're more than, you're exceedingly abundantly above all that we can think or ask. God, you're more than enough. Hallelujah. God is more than enough. Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Hallelujah. 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 That's my Jesus I'm talking about. He says, seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God. And what happens? And what happens when we seek first the kingdom of God? These things come to pass. Let me read it again just so you know what it, what it, where it says. It says here in uh, <clears throat> Matthew 6, 33, and I'm going to be closing with this. It says, and I, but i got a long ways to go there. we got ten other things to talk about in seeking first the things of God. Seek first the kingdom of God and His, see I love this, His righteousness. See that makes us in right standing with God. I have a lot of little 
uh, things here, notes here that I pick up and read off of. So if you see me picking up notes and, and reading this way off of this one and off of that one, that's because I'm a scatterbrain. I, I do things, you know, a little different than most people. I see people write a big old uh, note and, and they can have a, all their notes on a, on a ten, eight by 10 sheet of paper and go by that or they can have their computer up here and do that. Me, I, I don't know. This is the way God showed me, okay? But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. His righteousness. Look up that word righteousness and see what it means to you. To me, it means standing right with God. And if I'm standing, then listen, if I'm standing right with God, that means that God is standing right with me. Oh, how can you say that? Well, it's simple. Because when we seek something from God, when we go after what God's got for us, and we seek that righteousness of God, it comes upon us. And then we become righteous in His eyes and in His presence. That fragrance, oh, I love that word, fragrance. The smell that we have on, from His righteousness that He gives to us. Think about it. Think about that smell, that fragrance that God gives us. Seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. I don't know if you got anything out of this today or not, if I was jumping around and got back to where I needed to go, but I want to thank you all for tuning in today. I want to thank you as we close today. And once again, I just want to give you the opportunity to ask Jesus Christ into your heart. If you don't know him, it's very simple. Raise up your hands to heaven and say, Father God, I'm a sinner. I need a Savior, and that Savior is Jesus. And I accept him as my Lord and my Savior in Jesus' name. Now listen, let us know if you have a need. Let Jesus' Lord ministry know that you have a need. Let, us, let, let me know also on Facebook if you have a need that you need prayed for and, and, and stuff. Because, see, we're here. That's why a pastor opened this place up seven days a week. Not just so that we can be, you know, here speaking but so that we can meet your need. See, we're here to meet your need. I mean, I get my need meet, met by uh, sharing the word with you, preaching the word to you. But when you open up and you share your needs with someone, what happens is those needs that you have gets fulfilled. I thank you for watching. Remember, tune in again. Jesus is Lord Ministries. And, oh, by one, I got to say one thing before I go. Pastor Mike on Sunday morning, he preached a message about the heart that I think every person in this country, in this world, needs to hear. He preached this message, and I, I tell you, I've never heard such a good word about the heart. So go online, go to Jesus is Lord Ministries International, find Pastor Mike's messages from last Sunday, and listen to it. And hear what he said. It was awesome. And I, yes, I'm lifting Pastor Mike up because it was that awesome. Hallelujah. Father, once again, thank you for the people. Thank you for tuning in. In Jesus' name, amen.